I previously did a video on this lamp where I converted it to a ballastless actually it used the ballast still um, LED replacement that kept the ballast in and that worked fine except that it was very bright and all but the ballast got really hot 15 degrees at least hotter so I ended up putting the original bulb back in the other thing I didn't like about it was it was a bright almost a cool white like a daylight or a cool white a little bit much for this room I ended up putting this warm light bulb back in conventional fluorescent from the other lamp and put the LED bulb in the workroom where it's nice and bright anyway I kind of missed the brightness in here because uh, even though it was almost too bright this lamp isn't that bright I also wanted a warm white in here well, of course I got that with that bulb so I was curious about getting one of those bulbs that does require you to bypass the ballast to see if they were more efficient and how it went I also wanted a nice warm white in here because it's by the bedroom and by my monitors here I didn't want a bluish white in this room so I went and ordered a bulb this is not it this is the one that doesn't need a ballast the artwork on the package didn't look like this on the order and I and at least on eBay I couldn't find any for less than 20 bucks that's about what I paid for this one not a whole lot of markings on it well they don't even give you instructions on the uh, outside of the box interesting very little they sent me uh, an email saying remember you have to bypass the ballast or it'll burn out and that email included basically the same diagram as here for bypassing it nothing complicated the pair from one side of the ballast and the pair from the other side of the ballast just become the two wires and a whole list of useful cautions like don't do it while it's plugged in <laughs> don't rewire it while it's plugged in <laughs> Useful stuff like that. It looks quite similar to the one I didn't need to change the ballast for. And it's very good that they included a sticker put on the fixture so that a future person won't just put a regular bulb in there if they read the statement anyway. I'm a little surprised to find inside here that the ballast is simply a choke a two wire choke and it's only wired into one side of the line the black just goes straight through the white is interrupted by the choke so I'm just gonna unhook this uh, choke and put the white to the white and the question is how the uh, switch wiring is in the head because they only send two conductors up there and there's uh, four wires at the connector but I suppose I suppose they've thought of all this and hopefully the uh, two of the pins are dead on the lamp this has got to be a fairly common setup so hopefully I don't have to do anything bizarre in the head to make it work with the switch up there well it works nicely <laughs> except what I was worried about <laughs> with the power switch because the power switch puts a short across to turn the filaments on in the existing the old bulb well now if I flick the switch it shorts my whole power line out real briefly see my monitors went out my computer's rebooting yeah so that's not going to work too well <laughs> when it shorts out the line every time you do so I'm going to figure something out here not so simple so I had to take things apart a little bit further to get this plate out I had to take two of the clips out and that leaves the uh, lens vulnerable to falling out so I took that out of course the bulb initially and what I have up here is a switch with uh, like four contacts on it and it shorts between that one white momentarily you know to turn the filaments on I think all I have to really do with this switch is disconnect that one white wire from it and I think it'll still interrupt my black wire for an on off well I'm not sure of that it's gonna want to put a short across from black to that other white which won't be connected so yeah that should work this is the switch from the lamp and as it was wired with the coil bypassed I put a dead short across the line when I held it down 
And oh, just the only time I can see this white is connected into the matrix here. There's nothing in here I can use as an on off. Now, if you hold it down, you get that starting connection. And um, I did short the line a few times, so <laughs> the other context might be burnt for all I know. I did, did get quite a bit of odor out of it. Anyway, I took this switch out and I bought a canopy switch. Not a canopy switch, just a push on, push off switch at the local general store. So I removed that switch and put in my new switch. Real simple push button. And so now I'm going to have to find some fresh wire nuts. The wire nuts that were in here were just little junkers with no um, metal inside. And again, the rule with wire nuts, as I always preach, don't overstrip them. Quarter inch for most of the smaller sizes. Except for the real tiny size or the real huge size. Get them all lined up even. Now, wire nuts aren't great for stranded wire. The thing to do is to make sure each one of these stranded wires is twisted very tightly, tight as you can get it. But do not twist the three together. Hold the three level, so the insulation cuts are all level. And let the wire nut do its job. And then twist until you can't, basically. And I practically can't go anymore. None of these leads are going to pull out. And that's how you do a wire nut. So here's the finished rewiring. The black side and the white side just get combined into single things and they just go to white and black. And in this case, I've got the black interrupted by this switch for my convenience. And again, I couldn't find a, the right contacts to really give me an on and off. It's mostly a momentary switch, the original switch. And its function is to put the... Uh, see, from white to white would be a filament at one end of the bulb. And black to black would be a filament other end of the bulb. And the function of the switch is to momentarily, when it held when it's held down, to uh, that's why the white wire has to hook in along with the blacks. Um, completed a circuit through both filaments in series. So this filament, then this filament in series, and that um, in the base of the unit, the inductor choke. So the 120 go across all three of the components in series and um, you know be an appropriate voltage for the filaments. And then when you release the button, um, you just have 120 across one of the whites and one of the blacks and the bulb will light up. As you release the button and broke the circuit, you'd get a momentary surge, a little, I know people go crazy if I say back EMF, off the coil off the choke. You'll get a little pulse of voltage off the choke when you interrupt the circuit. Along with the heat of the filaments, that surge would be enough to get the bulb started. And then you just have 120 and you know one one or the other and it would keep going. Now if you just put this bulb in, it didn't modify anything. Well I measured it's a dead short from where the filaments would be. It's just a dead short on both sides. So yeah, the only thing you'd have in series with the power, when you push that button in, the stack button, you'd be putting all that current across the uh, choke, which would burn up pretty quick, I'd imagine. And in my case, I had that choke already bypassed, so I shorted out the whole 120 volt line. Surprised it didn't blow the, cir the circuit. I did it like three times just for the hell of it. <laughs> and uh, it was enough to knock down the power in the same circuit, you know, where I got the computer hooked to it, but it didn't blow the breaker. A little disconcerting. So now I'll put this plate back in that covers this wiring and put the bulb back in and uh, should be ready to give it one last show here. I started putting it together and I realized that this connector doesn't go on this way like I thought it did. It goes on this way. So the short 
on these two pins goes across the white and black <laughs> on both sides. And of course I tried it just for the hell of it, but and of course it shorted the line out again. But it's kind of messy, but this is what you got to do. White and black have got to go to <laughs> a black, and then white and black got to go to a white. So, yuck. They should have used some different colors for this harness. Reds and blues or something. I think that's what they usually use. So, another rewire. And I got to put it all back together again. I'm going to try it loose this time just to be sure. <laughs> so, let there be light. And it's a nice light. Just why I wanted a warmer light. The other light, the stock light, was so dim. Probably because it's uh, old. It's also warm white though, same kind of color. But without a real ballast and just an inductor in series, I wonder if it ever reached its real brightness. And kind of a cheesy deal there. I'm tempted to uh, take that other fixture where I put the LED in that doesn't need reballasting or deballasting. I'm tempted to deballast that fixture too, and I think that bulb would actually work that way because it doesn't really get any boost out of the uh, coil except for momentarily and that's probably just more of a waste a surge for the light to guard against it doesn't give it any running boost it'd be nice because that bulb only cost 12 bucks right at the local store um, the bulb that was originally in this package anyway I did a whole YouTube on it but I think I could uh, use this LED without a ballast. I wonder. And rewire that other fixture the way I did this one to get better numbers. And speaking of numbers, I should take some numbers. 118 volts. It's not able to measure the yeah, 0 0.8. 0 0.08 uh, watts. 9 watts. I was getting 11 earlier. Interesting. And uh, VA, same deal. So I got a one power factor, that's, or a .9, that's a great power factor. That just hurts. Wow, I can't believe that. So this is a much better way to go compared to using the uh, ballast. Better off getting rid of the ballast, although it was kind of a pain in the keister, as you saw. Although I could do another one now that I know what I'm doing. I could do another one quite a bit quickly. Go ahead and buy the switch before I even took it apart. So that's my conversion story for the set go and there's the switch I bought at the local store so the unit worked okay 11.8 watts initially it settled down to 9 watts it's nice and bright that's what I want and it was a little bit of a bear the first time anyway wiring this thing I just didn't know what to do but even mechanically it's kind of fiddly taking the clips out and all that do as I say, not as I do. Don't plug what you know might be a short into the wall. I kind of wanted to see what would happen with my circuits here. Um, but yeah, you could use a dim bulb tester or simply an ohmmeter and check your work before plugging it into the wall. <laughs> I'm going to have to double check the uh, circuit that didn't blow when I uh, pulsed it like three different times with a short. It's been running for a while. Unit runs nice and cool. I feel a little bit of warmth right here. But it, it runs cooler than the other ones, that's for sure. <laughs>